All right, to start making your conductive dough, we're gonna start with our water, which is about one cup, which is about 200 milliliters. We're just gonna add it into, in this case, a large beaker. You could also use a pot. And essentially, you just measure out your ingredients and you add them all in at once. So here we've got about a quarter cup of salt. That's about 50 milliliters. A tablespoon of vegetable oil. I just eyeballed it. Just imagine what a large spoonful would be like, and that's about enough. And here's the cream of tartar, which for chemists, chemists will know it as potassium bitartrate. And there's three tablespoons here, quite a bit. So it's about three spoonfuls. I eyeballed that as well. And then finally, the, the stuff that makes it doughy. Uh, we add about a cup and a half, which is about 250 milliliters of flour. In this case, I'm just using all-purpose flour. So you put it in your beaker or whatever pot that you might have. And I'm gonna turn it on a low heat and just start to stir it. You'll notice that the dough that I'm making is yellow-orange. That's just because I happen to have some orange food coloring in the lab, so I thought I would use that. And give it a good stir. Wooden spatulas are good because you're not going to nick the sides of your beaker. You could use a, a plastic spoon or plastic spatula. You could use a metal spatula as well. Just make sure everything's clean before you go in and make this. And then we're going to uh, mix this until it thickens a bit until it makes our dough, and then we'll uh, roll it out. But the, thing, the key thing right now is to incorporate all the ingredients and make sure that it becomes as homogenous as it possibly can. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes, and I don't know if you can see, but it's definitely clumping together more. And actually, when I came in the lab, it smelled a little bit like baking bread. So that's kind of a good indicator you're getting close to being done and it's starting to roll into a ball uh, as you stir it. So uh, it should just be a few more minutes now of heating it just to drive off a little bit of excess water. And then we'll let it cool and we'll knead in a little bit of extra flour and then we should be done. Okay, so here's what the dough looks like after we've taken it out of the beaker and just before we're going to start to knead it. You'll notice if you look at the texture, it's still kind of... Um, there's some obvious lumps in here, and we want something that's really as much like Play-Doh as possible. So you're going to knead the dough a lot like what you would do if you're making bread. Just kind of fold it over and then push forward with the palm of your hand, and then continue that process until the consistency is really uh, pretty much the way that you'd like it. Now the dough is still very warm here. Uh, you can't tell in the video too much, but there's a little bit of condensation on the lab top here from uh, the heat of the dough. So if it's too hot for you, make sure that you wait for it to cool off. Give it a few minutes, five minutes, go get yourself a cup of coffee, and then come back to it. And you notice that it kneads actually pretty quickly, and it's getting a nice consistency right now. It looks a lot like Play-Doh. So I'm gonna give it a couple more presses, and then I'm gonna show you how we can use this as a solid electrolyte to make a battery and this will be our pathway for our ions to move, but that's for the next segment. Okay, so here's the finished dough, and if you weren't going to do anything with your dough for that day, uh, you should put it in a Ziploc bag or some other airtight container to prevent the excess moisture from drying out your dough. I mean, that moisture is key to making sure that it functions as an electrolyte, so um, just make sure you take your dough and Keep it in a Ziploc bag and put it in the fridge if you'd like. I think it'll stay just fine uh, outside at room temperature for a few weeks.